Theodore Anneman was one of the most enigmatic characters in the history of magic and metalism, and also one of its most prolific. He was the creator of The Jinx, one of magic's most notable periodicals, and wrote a number of books on various facets of card magic and metalism. After his death in 1942, at the age of 35, his best work was compiled in a book entitled Practical Mental Effects, published in 1944. But as celebrated as this book remains, are the effects still effective for modern audiences? Yeah, just blown away pretty much, and uh, just... I don't know. I'm just amazed, that's all I can say. When he was guessing the words that we put down on the newspaper, I have no idea how he did that. It was pretty uh, intense. Wow is, is, is the first word that comes to mind. I thought Richard was amazing. I picked a line in the newspaper and suddenly he could like read where, the words he was thinking of and that, that, was, that was unbelievable. Welcome to Practical Mental Effects. You know, Anneman's Practical Mental Effects, along with Corinna's 13 Steps, are considered to be the foundation of mentalism, and, uh, but they're quite different from each other. Uh, Corinna was, was written much later and was meant to be a sort of primer of mentalism, taking uh, each uh, step, uh, each part of mentalism, first nail writers and then prediction effects and that type of thing. Right. Whereas, Practical mental effects came from a much earlier time. Corinda was like the 50s and 60s. Whereas practical mental effects uh, came from the Jinx, which was uh, written between 1934 and 1941. And already within the Jinx, these effects had been used for 20 years or so. So these are effects from the turn of the century, from the, you know, from the early teens and the 20s. From working uh, repertoires. Yes, that's the thing. Uh, every one of these effects in, in this book um, were uh, from magicians and mentalists who were doing this stuff for real. That's why this stuff is so important. And uh, unlike Corinda, which was set, he set out to create steps in the study of mentalism, that was not the case here with practical mental effects. This, uh, this com compilation of mental effects from the jinx didn't happen until three years after Animan passed away. Okay. And when they put them together in practical mental effects, they tried to organize them. Card effects, living and dead tests, and that, but that was never the intent in the first place. Right. The intent was a, a magazine filled with uh, different effects contributed by Anneman and others. And so when we decided to do this, we talked in great length about this. We said, oh, we're going to take it chapter by chapter like we did with 13 steps. It doesn't make any sense. Right. You know, all we're going to do is wind up having to do 12 living and dead tests in a row or, you know, 12, 12 uh, card effects in a row. Yeah. And, and even uh, in the introduction, you know, he mentions, Crimmins mentions that, you know, he tries his best to put these together in some orderly fashion. But even there, you can't really do that because some effects have... Um, have cards that aren't card effects or part of prediction effects and what have you. So we just chose to, to pick a, a montage of effects from different parts of the book and we're going to disperse these over the course of some six DVDs. Yes. And we decided to do it in two, two efforts. This, this first set that you're about to look at um, will consist of the first three DV, DVDs and then we'll move on to the second set in a very short order. Uh, I also tried to take effects for this first uh, series that are quite easy to make up and do. There's hardly anything in here you have to go out and buy. Right. Everything you can put together at home. And, uh, and I want it to truly be practical for anyone <laughs> who, who uh, wants to, to learn these effects. I think it's also important to point out that, like the Corinda Project, uh, in no way are we trying to replace this book. Uh, we, we culled through the material that, uh, like you said, uh, you, you picked some of the, the easier stuff, um, but uh, we're not taking the, the best stuff. This is not a best of. Uh, we really want to uh, inspire people to, to kind of dig into the book uh, even further because uh, we're just scratching the surface here. There's just untold riches in this book, and even across six DVDs, we won't even have scratched the surface of how, how powerful mm -hmm. and contemporary and how applicable to modern repertoire as a lot of this material still is. It is not dated 
mm-hmm. in any way. And you see that all the time on, on magic forums. Uh, it's not dated material at all. My big thing, and let me just finish this quick introduction by saying, you know, my big thing is so much happens with technology these days that more and more people want to attribute any miracle they see to some kind of computer chip or something of that nature. The material in here is of the simplest natures. Papers, uh, chalk, slates, things that are just so far removed from technology that you can't, you can't imagine the, how it could be removed further. With everything that goes on, I know I said it before, with everything that goes on today and all the wonders that we see, still, to this day, no machine, no computer can penetrate into your brain. Yeah. And yet, what happens? Somebody like, uh, we come along with something so simple as a pencil and a paper, and we're able to do that. You see, it's like the anti-technology. And, and it's twice as strong because of that very factor. So we hope you enjoy this series. And, uh, and as Jim said, please understand this is just the beginning for you. Thank you.